Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. Today we're going to talk about curried functions. In functional programming, you create pure functions. And pure functions, to be pure, have to declare their dependencies in function parameters or function arguments. So instead of using request up here, which is hard-coded from the actual import, or maybe some from global variable, which could possibly change later, instead we say, nope, if you want to use it, you have to pass it into the arguments, and then I can use it. That way we guarantee same input, same output. This is a very common pattern, though, and what happens is that you already know a lot of these arguments ahead of time. That's why we put them off to the left, to make it easier to create partial functions from them. Right? We already know what the request module is probably going to be. It's going to be this guy. And what we don't know is the URL, and that's okay. That's the dynamic part of the function, the reusability part. Because it's such a common pattern, you start using function partials everywhere. In the example here, we used function partials to parse the weather and time JSON by creating really composable functions. We know what the default value is going to be if we can't find it in the JSON, and we know the fields that we're looking for in this weather JSON, but we don't actually know the JSON itself. So get or takes three parameters. We're going to say, all right, look, the default value is I don't know if I can't find it. Max temperature is in this particular path in the JSON, but at runtime, we'll pass it the result. We can compose this nice little sentence together. It gives us the weather. But what if there's an easier way that's less verbose from having to use partials? What if there's a way to do partials from the original function? If we gave it only some of the parameters, it would give us a partial back. But if we give it all, it would call it like a normal function. Well, that's done via curry. The curry function here is a utility function, create curried functions. So instead of writing curried functions yourself, which I'll show you in another video, in this way we can just create them on the fly. Curry takes in a function. If you supply all arguments to the function that it gives you back, in this case request get, it'll call it like a normal function. If you only supply one, it'll give you a function partial back. Now guess what? We've already done this. So we can call get URL just like we did before with request get, pass in request and it does the exact same thing. And we've already used it down here. I'm not gonna change anything about the code and merely by turning it into curry, it works the exact same way. Parses the time and the weather. This partial function that we've created from a curry function is a lot less code and it's a lot easier to create partial functions. But we can also use the original curry function without having to use the partial if we want to. So we can just use it as a normal function. There's no need to force yourself in using partials. So it's, it's flexible that way. So now we can rerun it and you can see this curried function that we didn't create any partials from works the exact same way as the partial function as well. Another way to write this is you could store it in a completely different variable, another. So we can say request get with the request. This gives us a partial function and we can say another time URL. We run our code and it works the exact same way. And lastly, because it is a function that gets returned, we can treat it as an inline return and just immediately call the time you roll that way. It works the same way. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use curried functions to make creating partials a lot easier, a lot more flexible, and the curried function doesn't force you to create partials if you don't want to. You can actually just call it like you would a normal function and it works just the same.